Hello, this is Chad Chancellor. Welcome to this week's Next Move Group We Are Jobs podcast. We are celebrating our ninth anniversary, and I just want to thank all of you out there listening to this, watching this on our YouTube channel, for believing in our mission way back when. Our mission's always been to help small to mid-sized companies and communities grow together, and so many of you believed in us along the way. So what we're going to do to celebrate starting year 10 year 10 is we are going to actually reinvigorate our podcast channel and YouTube channel by putting out free educational content ever Thursday. We used to do videos and shows every single Thursday free for the entire public. And then as our business has grown, we've gotten busy. So sometimes it's hard to do that, but we're going to redo that now since we're starting out into year 10. So every single Thursday, we're going to put out for you educational content that's free on both the podcast channel and the YouTube. YouTube channel. We've got about 120 videos we've done for our movement members. They get to access all our videos. So what we're going to do is play parts of those videos for you that's educational. You'll get absolutely free educational content. You won't get to hear all of it because that's for our members only and they pay for that. But you will get bits and pieces where you can learn along the way and, you know, both improve your community, your organization, and even have career tips in there for you. So with that being said, let's get our podcast and YouTube going. Due to various demands on time and resources, economic development and trade and export agencies often struggle to complete effective market research and business outreach campaigns. For the past 10 plus years, Research FDI, along with our affiliated consulting groups at Research B2B and FDI 365, have leveraged our in-house knowledge, resources, and expertise in market research and consulting to help over 250 organizations directly facilitate inward investment attraction and new trade and export opportunities for their regions across a wide variety of industry sectors. Our highly personalized services and best cost to quality ratio in the industry ensures our client satisfaction, leading to repeat customers year after year. What are you waiting for? Leave the market research and business outreach to the expert team at Research FDI. To learn more about our services, contact us today. In this video, we're going to cover the top 12 mistakes to avoid in job interviews. These are mistakes that we commonly see candidates make over and over and over. I'm Chad Chancellor, co-founder of Next Move Group. I'm Alex Metzger, the other co-founder of Next Move Group. We got both of us today because typically as we do our executive searches, each of us handle the search almost totally to ourselves. So some of the mistakes that I've seen and stories that I've got for you may be different than Alex. And we're going to double team you today and hit these dozen mistakes so you do better the next time you have a job interview. Mistake number one is not mirroring the community that you're in. So what we mean by this is if you're interviewing in a rural setting, for instance, and you go in and you talk about all your international travel and how much you love going to Paris and everywhere you shop and have coffee, sometimes that can intimidate some of those committee members and they might think to themselves, well, you're highly qualified. Uh, is this person going to be happy if they live in this town? Not only are they going to be qualified, but also how they dress is a good one. I've been in several very rural towns where somebody will walk in in a three-piece suit, handkerchief, a nice tie, hair slicked back. And again, uh, you always want to dress to impress and look the best you can, but you also want to mirror the community. In a community that's very rural or has a couple farmers, when those people leave, they're thinking, is this candidate going to fit in? Are they going to be happy here? And we've done searches all the way from the World Trade Center, New Orleans, down to small towns. And so obviously for the World Trade Center, New Orleans, you may want to wear your three-piece suit and your cuff links and, and really address that part. But, and so we don't advocate if you're doing a rural job that you come in, you know, not wearing a tie, but just think about, you don't want to seem intimidating to the other people. You want them to think that they're comfortable with you. And one of the best stories I've got about this, I grew up in a little small Mississippi Southern town and we had a banker in town who had quickly risen up the ranks. And I asked him one day, I said, how, how'd you rise up so quick? And he said, well, he said, I learned quickly how to mirror the other person. He said, some of the biggest depositors in this bank are the farmers in town, and they'll come in in their boots and mud all over them, he said, but I can sit and mirror them, and we have commonalities. He said, or if the governor walks in, I can mirror him. And that just made a lot of sense to me. So as a candidate, when you go into a community, you think about how can I mirror this town? So we also recently had a, a fella go into a good mid-sized town. So it wasn't a major market, but it certainly wasn't rural. And he talked so much about his international travel that the folks actually thought to themselves when he left, they said, well, he'll never be happy here. 
what he should have done is worked his international travel in so they could see he's comfortable doing that, but not push it so much that they couldn't see him fitting into their community. Exactly. I would also say that most people are familiar with mirroring other people when you're in conversations. You know, it helps build rapport. So here, you still want to be yourself, but I would stress that try to visualize the perfect candidate based on the job description, based on the community size, and then try to mirror that. You're mirroring the community, not exactly the people asking you the questions in the room. And when we build a job profile, most executive search firms do this. We talk a lot about that community and what their ideal candidate is. So you ought to be able to read that job profile, figure out what they're looking for so you know what to mirror. Mistake number two, this is another common mistake we see often. It is not having a strategy to offset your weaknesses. Now listen, every single candidate has weaknesses as it pertains to whatever job they're going after. Some of them are personality flaws that everybody has. Some of them are weaknesses as a candidate. You should have a plan to address both. For instance, let's say you're a candidate that talks a little too much. I happen to know some people like that. You have to have a plan for going in to cut yourself off sooner rather than later. Many times people will ask a question and they're six, seven minutes into the answer and dragging on and they're not being concise. So the search committee can get a little, not only unfocused and, and lose interest for what you're saying, but a little off put because they don't get to ask certain questions that they had prepared. And if you have a weakness as a candidate, especially for our young up and coming candidates, maybe you've only been in the business two or three years, don't just go in without a strategy to offset your weaknesses. So talk about, let's say you've never been the CEO of an organization. You've been the, the project manager, but you've responded to 23 the RFPs. We'll talk about that and talk about everything that you have learned from responding to those. So never give in and admit to something to weakness. If a town's wanting a recruiter, never say, I never recruited anything. Talk about the steps that you have made. If a town's wanting someone to develop an industrial park, don't say, well, I've never developed an industrial park. You may say, I've learned these are the steps you take to develop the industrial park. So never give in to that weakness, but no going in. What Alex is saying, know your weakness going in. I understand what the community's looking for, what's their ideal candidate, and ask yourself, now what might my weaknesses be so when you're asked those questions, you can offset it with your answer.